Hey guys, I'm Miguel, I'm an engineer at Ryzen Hobby. We decided to make a video about setting up your gain channel control for the AS3000. We've been getting a lot of questions about how to set up the knob or how to set up a switch, how to do trims on those switch positions. So we're gonna talk about uh, that variety of methods to set up your gain control. If you want to skip ahead to a specific method, we'll have links in the description below to skip to whichever part you want. Um, but obviously, we'll start with the knob and work our way to the more complicated ones. Um, just to give you guys an overview of the different setups, we have um, aux 7 is my gain or my knob assignment right now. So it's basically I move the knob and it adjusts it. Uh, zero would be gyro off. Anything over zero is going to be a gyro gain and anything below it is going to be a heading hold gain unless heading hold is off. If heading hold hasn't been enabled in the S3000 menu, then under zero is gonna be off. So that's gonna be what the knob does. If you want, to, and everyone's gonna to wanna to go through the knob setup first to find out what values they want or are good for their plane. So I'm gonna fly my plane, I'm gonna adjust the knob, I'm gonna find a value that's good. So like 27, let's say. I'm gonna land the plane right down. Maybe I want a second flight mode for like different plane speeds. So I'll adjust the knob again, find the other value, write that down. And then after you do that, you might wanna assign it to a switch. So you can quickly switch between each mode. So in this case, I have a switch assigned to aux six. So obviously my off position for the switch is zero to turn the gyro off in case, you know, anything goes wrong or, you know, if the gyro falls off or something like that, wiggling around and making your plane go crazy. But I have one position there for 17. That's a value that I found with the knob. I know, I know it works well. And that would be my hide speed gain. And then I have a third position for a low speed gain. So obviously lower plane speed, you want more gain because the less airspeed you have, the less uh, it reacts. So you want it, the gyro to react a little more to compensate. Um, so that's a single three position switch setup. You can also do a combination of switches to get even more flight modes. So here I also have another switch added to it. I have a flight mode set up basically. So I have my off gyro high speed and gyro low speed. Then I have another switch to switch to heading hold mode so you see now it's on the negative side, and that's my heading hold low speed, heading, high heading speed. hold high speed, and back off. So three heading position basically speed. does off. off, high speed or low speed, low speed, and the two position switches between heading Euro hold and gyro mode. Euro, Euro and then the last thing you can do to this setup is even add a trim mix to that switch output. So then if you're flying and you know, one day your, your value that you found is fine, but then another day it feels like it's reacting a little too much or it's not enough, you can have your trim switch set up so that you can adjust each of those individual flight modes. So if you see here, again, I have my gyro low speed is 24, my gyro high speed is 17. If I use my left trim, which I set up for this, and get adjust that um, high speed to 19, my low speed still remains at 24, and then I can adjust that individually as well. So obviously, each setup has a added level of complexity, but we'll go over all of those, starting with the knob all the way to multi-flight mode and trim switch setup. So let's start with, we have a DX18 here. We'll start with a raw model. This is a brand new created model. So the first thing to do would be the knob setup. So you're gonna go scroll down to system setup, you just turn off RF, and channel assign. So we're gonna wanna go here to the next screen. And for this, we'll just, um, it's already on aux eight, by, or on aux three by default. Let's choose our channel 10, move the knob here. And now we have our right knob on aux five. So that's a pretty simple setup. We'll go back over here. And you guys can see my knob now adjust. It was also assigned to aux three, but we assigned it to aux five. So you can see we can adjust that. We can use that. Once you go into your AS3000 setup, you would choose that aux five to uh, adjust your gain values. 
So that's a pretty simple setup. So then the next thing you'll want to do is go back to your system setup. And this is for the three position uh, switch or two position, whatever you want, channel assign. So here I'm gonna move my three position switch B. And then you'll want to go to a menu that is digital switch setup. So a lot of people we've noticed have been using things like your travel to limit, to set the value by limiting how much that switch output can go. But actually the digital setup menu is the best way to do this and it's actually much better. So here I'm gonna choose my switch B. And so the digital switch setup basically lets you set a specific output value for each switch position. So the first one I'm gonna set it to zero. That's gonna be my off position. The next one I'll set it to 17. This is a value that I found using the knob previously. And then we'll set this to 24. And obviously these are both over uh, zero. So they're gonna be gyro gains, not heading hold, right? So you can see there, if you move the switch, it'll tell you which position you currently have it set to as well, in case you're not sure. So we'll back out of there. We'll go to our monitor and you can see now my switch has the three modes, off, 17, and 24. So that's a switch setup, also pretty simple. Although the digital switch setup is something not a lot of people seem to know about. So that may, might be something new to you and is a very useful feature for this scenario. Now the next thing or the next thing to do is a flight mode setup instead of just a switch. And you, if you want to add trims to your uh, switch, you will need to do this through the flight mode setup. So here we have the flight mode setup. You have to use a switch. So we'll do switch B for now, just a single switch. Um, actually, we'll do both while we're at it. So I'm going to use switch A, which is a two position switch to switch between heading hold and gyro mode. And switch B will be my three position to switch between off, high speed and low speed. And you can change this however you want. That's just the way I'm doing it for this example. And here you can um, determine what each position combination is going to give you. So you can see here as I switch, uh, change my two position switch, switches between flight mode, it stays on flight mode one both times, which is what I want when switch B is at zero, because if my three position is in position zero, I always want my gyro to be off, whether I'm in heading hold mode or gyro mode. So that's fine, we have flight mode one on both. Then if we, change switch B to position one, this would be my high speed mode, we're in flight mode two. And then if I switch it again, flight mode three. Now, while my three position is in position one or two, if I switch my switch A to change to heading hold, now we have flight mode four, and we want to change this flight mode three to five. So we have off, flight mode four, flight mode five. Those are my flight mode four and five are my heading holds. And if I go back on the two position switch, now it's two and three, which are my gyro modes. And you can also um, rename these if you want to. You can change the name for those flight modes and spoken flight modes. So I'm not gonna do this here because it takes a while to type that out. It's a little easier on the iX12 since you have the little uh, touchscreen keyboard, but you can rename those there to uh, help you remember the flight modes you set up a little easier, it makes more sense. But so now that we set up the flight mode uh, feature, now we wanna go to channel assign. And over here on our AUX5, instead of choosing an actual switch, you wanna choose flight mode. That's basically gonna output your flight mode position, or you're gonna have different outputs based on your flight mode combination. So we're outputting flight mode on there. Um, and then digital switch setup, there's an option to change the output for flight mode. So that's actually the first one. So you can see we have our flight mode switch and that's set to aux five like we just did. So 
as we mentioned earlier, this is flight mode one. We want that to be zero. That's gonna be our off mode. Okay, we switch our three position to position one. That's going to be our gyro high speed. Set that to 17. So remember, these are values that you find using your knob first. And then 24 for flight mode three. So that's, so just using the three position, we have off, gyro high speed, and gyro low speed. Then if we switch to two position, now we have on the three position off, heading hold high speed, and heading hold low speed. So for heading hold, remember we need to have values that are negative. So we're gonna do negative 15. And these values aren't necessarily going to match what you found on the gyro side. You also need to use the knob to figure this out for heading hold. The gains don't apply in the same way. A value that works for heading hold, or gyro on the positive end, isn't necessarily going to work on the heading hold end. So there we go. So I have gyro low speed, high speed, and off. So those are all my modes. You can see here on my switch position, aux 5. So I have Flight mode two. gyro high speed, Flight mode gyro low speed, mode back to one. off. I switched the two position to heading hold side. Now I have Flight mode four. Um, heading hold low speed or high speed, Flight heading hold low speed, and back Flight to off. One. And if you switch the heading hold or gyro switch here, you can see it doesn't change because it's in flight mode one for both of those, which is set to position zero. So that's how you can get multiple flight modes using more than one switch. Now, if you want to add a trim switch to that, um, we'll go over that next. Um, even if you are doing just a three position switch, you still need to do that flight mode setup to be able to set up this trim switch properly. You can't just directly assign your switch to the channel output. So the first thing we wanna do in the trim setup is go here. Um, now, this setting you would change depending on whether you wanna use your left or right trim, but I'm gonna use the left trimmer and you wanna change that to flight mode. And what this means, the trim type is that basically when you change flight modes, your trim is unique for each of those flight modes. If you leave it on common, the trim that you apply in one flight mode will be the same amount of trim applied to another flight mode. So if I switch my gain value, but I adjusted trim in one of those positions, that same trim is gonna apply to all my other modes and I don't want that. So that's why you set this to flight mode so that each flight mode position has a unique trim value. So you set that to uh, flight mode, you leave it as digital. This value here are the steps that the trim applies each time you uh, toggle it. So if you feel like your trim is applying too much then you can reduce that a little bit, or if you want more uh, gain adjustment per trim toggle, then you increase this value. We're gonna leave it at five. So you leave that. And then we're gonna want to go to our mixing setup add a mix here and we'll basically want to make this our the trim that you just chose so in our case the left trim right here and you want that to mix towards your output which you selected for a gain control which is aux 5 set this to 100 percent rate on both ends almost there and you don't want this mix to always be on. You want it on for, so you want to select your flight mode as the switch that enables or disables this. And you want it on for all your flight modes except one because one is your gyro off position and you don't want to accidentally add trim to that off position because then you'll end up adding gyro gain. You want it to always be zero. You can see if I make this one, and you look at aux 5 here on the monitor, it lets me apply trim to that. Basically, I'm adding gain to my gyro off position, and you don't want that. So if I accidentally add trim here, but this mix is off for flight mode one, then you'll see it resets to zero, and trim doesn't do anything here anymore. And then, 
If I switch flight positions, now I have, I can adjust this. And since we set the trim to be per flight mode and not common, you can see if I'm in um, position or my seven in my high speed gyro and low speed gyro, which is 24. If I make adjustments here with the trim, I can go back to this one and you can see it hasn't changed. So you have to be in each flight mode to make changes to it. Um, as you can tell, the jumps are a little high, so you might want to go and make those trim steps a little smaller, or you can also decrease the rate which the mix applies. Um, but yeah, that's it for the trim mix setup. And that basically wraps up that whole setup. So yeah, that basically wraps up this video for how to set up your channel output for the AS3000. Thanks.